We also took a long time to read an amazing book. This is called The Story of of life on earth. Of life on earth. It's this beautiful picture book that takes you right back to the beginning. And this book is really cool because it explains some of the things that scientists believe about how our earth came to be, but also that there's some things they're not really sure about. Would anyone like to say anything just before we start to do some reading from here? So maybe this book will talk a little bit about that. On Sunday, I figured out how the dinosaurs died on TV. A, a, a giant asteroid hit the planet. Is that one of the theories that scientists have? It was on TV. Mm -hmm. and we read this book over a couple of weeks, and that was just so rich and amazing that I wasn't all that worried that we weren't actually talking about water. It was a hostile place, so a place that was not a kind place to be very different from the world we know today. Well, I would read only a few pages at a time because I was stopping a lot to allow the children to comment and connect and add information. No one can live where four volcanoes are. Why would it be hard, do you think, to live where volcanoes are? There's volcanoes in El Salvador and so many people live in El Salvador. And do they ever erupt, the volcanoes? Mm, well, in El Salvador there's a lot, it's like a bumpy place. Mm -hmm. So maybe a long time ago? Hmm. When we're having a discussion, we'll sit in a circle. But when I'm reading a book, I don't find the circle to be all that helpful because I'm always reading books that have illustrations or photographs. So I want the children to see the pictures. So no one knows how life first started. It's still one of Earth's most fascinating mysteries. It's not ideal because they're not facing each other, but I want them to see what's in the book. And I just, I don't know, there's something about showing the book around the circle that to me feels mm. a little bit awkward. Here are some of the very first kinds of life that we had on the earth. Maybe they're gonna turn into fish. Mm. Maybe they might turn into new animals that no one's even ever seen. And I may be thinking about why children might not be participating or how can I get children to give more. Do you know what oxygen is? Why would it be life-changing that we would now have oxygen? How would that change the earth? So if it would help people stay alive because if people can't breathe then they would it would die. And I heard you say oxygen is just the air. Yeah. Right? That we breathe? It's another word for it. So sometimes the kids are so excited especially when they can relate what we're talking about to experiences they've had. Hey, um, that, that fish I think is human. Let's see. I watched the show and it said it's human. I think. I think when you're teaching this way, you always have to be reading the children. And if they hadn't been very interested in it or I wasn't getting a lot of participation, I probably would have moved more quickly through it. But they were just so engaged that I, why would I rush them? The question is, I wonder if the, the underwater dinosaurs died. Oh, Already. you think they might not have? Yeah. Like, you think that maybe there are still dinosaurs underwater? Hmm. I don't think so. So, because David a very long time ago. 